line as well there. Yeah, I'm in now. Okay, wonderful. And I think we've got uh, Kathleen on the line from Kansas. Kathleen, can you hear us? I guess we can uh, pull Kathleen in uh, a short while. So welcome to everyone to today's uh, live chat. It's a little bit of an experiment today. We're going to be doing the uh, live chat with uh, video running alongside it as well. So uh, we're just getting a bit of uh, audio feedback. There we are. Uh, so hopefully we're all live and uh, everyone can uh, everyone can hear us okay there. So uh, uh, so welcome to the uh, welcome to the uh, chat room today. And um, so uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the topic of motivating agents. So uh, which I think is going to be quite uh, quite fascinating. So Megan, do you want to uh, kick off with the uh, first question to everyone in the chat room? Yep, John T. The first question is: Do you have any motivation schemes currently running in your contact center? So this could be anything from spot prizes to dress down days, or maybe anything bigger that's running over the course of the year. You'd just like to take a moment to take those responses into the chat room. And I'm just going to type that question into the chat room as well for you now too. That's, do you have any motivation schemes currently running in your contact center? Hi, we just got a technical problem we're trying to. Yeah, so that's muted. Okay, yeah. Um, the only other way is going into the chat webinar. Um, yep, just to repeat, the first question is, do you have any motivation schemes currently running in your contact centre? Uh, yeah. I've actually had quite an interesting morning because I've been to the UCAS Chat contact centre in Cheltenham today. And their main tactic for getting through results day is feeding everyone lots of food. So um, I think they started the day with croissants. That was moving on to um, bacon sandwiches at 9.30, afternoon tea and then following up, wrapping up the day with pizza. So I'm sure their long day will be well worth it in the end. And they get pretty well all of their all of their peak traffic in one single day, isn't it? Yep, yeah, um, they go from about thirty to two hundred agents for results day. So the rest of the year it's fairly quiet and a lot of preparation, and then they just have this big boom when everyone's getting their results. And that's everyone who needs to go through clearing or is just a bit unsure about what their grades actually mean. And it, all that traffic comes straight into the call centre. I think this morning they had their social media team online from 6 a.m. this morning, trying to buffer some of the traffic before it all went mental when the phones opened at 7.30 a.m. So yeah, they've got a big day today. We've also got some other comments coming in from different motivation schemes now. Um, Alex said, we have photos now and then to help motivate the team. And maybe you could elaborate on what fuddles are, or maybe there's a typo there in its huddles. Um, Darren says, we have a bonus ski scheme and spot prizes ranging from car park spots to free coffees and meals. Um, we've also got Marie says, we have introduced a profit share scheme for all colleagues with the aim to motivate all to upsell and rake in the rewards. And um, what do you think of that idea, John T? I haven't heard that one before. No, I think that's uh, that's quite a quite an interesting uh, interesting uh, approach. I don't know quite how the uh, mechanics of that work, so it'd be quite interesting if you uh, have some more more details on that. Okay, um, we also have Clint who says we have a tiering system that earns you more money should you reach the allocated target. Um, Melissa, unfortunately, says we currently don't have anything, so maybe she's in here looking for some ideas. That's half the point of today. So hopefully, we will be able to give you a few pointers there, Melissa. Um, Katie's also, we have days out of the office to celebrate success and meals and drinks to know that their hard work has 
not gone unnoticed. I particularly like the idea of um, days out because one of the um, one of the interesting things that did a little bit of work on recently, uh, which is around agent engagement, uh, one of the uh, biggest pointers towards agent engagement is: Do you have a best friend at work? And certainly things like uh, you know celebrating success, having meals out, socialising outside of work is is really quite a key part of, of building a best friend at, uh, or can be quite supportive of building a, a best friend at work and that in turn can lead to more engaged agents which in turn means leads to less less attrition so I think that that could be a very uh, could be a very powerful one yeah that sounds like a good idea John T and um, we've actually got some confirmation back about what a fuddle is and um, Alex says fuddles are events where we have food and drink to celebrate the hard work and game and play some games and Katie says they use the word fuddle as a food combined with huddle in their team ah food and huddle so I'm going to make a note of that I think that's a, a very strong one yeah um, Ryan saying in winter we provide warm cooked meals to agents every day and that helps with adherence and motivates staff which in return increases productivity um, and Shalandra said we have a superhero theme where we encourage our staff to behave like superheroes to assist the clients so does that involve any dressing up at all or is it is it just a day-to-day -day mantra if you can awesome. elaborate on that, that'd be quite nice. I think we've seen, we tend to see superhero uh, outfits at um, one of the big, uh, is it the, is it the um, Red Nose Day tends to be, uh, people get dressed up in superhero costumes. It could be very yeah. powerful. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it, on the floor? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, we've also got another question now saying, what do your specific schemes focus on? So is that hitting targets of metrics, such as average handling time or maintaining high levels of attendance or the numbers of sales? You see, if I could just type that into the chat room now for you. I'm mean, back into the chat room. I wasn't getting all the uh, chats coming up. Yeah, yeah out on our travel, you know, a number of different schemes focusing on lots of different things. Um, some people focus on quality, and there's a lot of people who just focus on having. A lot of good fun really with the long-term plan of it just improving morale and overall results and um, John do you agree there's a variety of targets really when it comes to motivation what's important to different people yeah I think it, it's certainly the the target on what you can measure and one of the problems in the in the call centers is we often measure some of the wrong things so we target agents on average handling time uh, which goes really in the face of um, you know quality uh, getting quality standards in and in fact there was a, a question on the chat room saying you know what what statistics should I put down to an agent level um, and the, the two were calls handled and uh, average handling time both which are easy to get off the ACD uh, but are probably not the best ones for um, for motivating people we have a comment in from Marie it's back that we we're saying about the smaller things and just doing things for fun is that she has a team sweet day where they bring in sweets just to boost morale on the busier days so nothing to do with meeting targets or anything it is just the focus on fun and having a good time yeah we had quite an active uh, discussion Megan didn't we about uh, is sugar the best way to best way to motivate people yeah um, it's quite controversial as a topic isn't it? So, <laughs> I worked in a call centre where every Friday was Sugar Friday and I did enjoy it and it was quite good fun, you know, but that was cakes, general sweets, I think Red Bull if I remember rightly and I think a banana thrown in for good measure but I don't remember them being eaten. So, no. um, yeah. But yeah, sweets and chocolate, that, I mean it's just a, such, such an instant reward, it feels good, um, you know, you can hand it out, it doesn't cost a lot, uh, you can do it almost without a budget so, uh, you know, it can be quite nice. On, on a similar theme, um, hot weather, which we haven't had too much of this this summer, but on a really hot day, just going out and buying everyone an ice lolly can, uh, uh, from the ice cream van can be uh, can be very nice. Yeah, that does tend to go down well, doesn't it? We've got a topical one here from Shona, 
uh, she said that one thing which helped with engagement was for the World Cup, and we're doing it for the Rugby World Cup this year, is using the agent scripting tool to make match predictions and pay a fee with the top three at the end of the tournament winning the pound and a percentage going to going to charity, which I thought was uh, quite interesting. We had, uh, see if I can dig it out, we had um, uh, some articles last year for the, for the, for the Football World Cup, uh, I think we had three Football World Cup games, and I think we've also got on the Call Centre Helper website a, a Six Nations rugby game. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, perhaps while we're carrying on with the, the webinar, I'll see if I can uh, I'll see if I can dig those out and flash those up on the screen. Okay. Well, we also have some other comments in. Um, Alouette says we base our incentives on increasing performance and quality, and the games can also bring morale into the office and keep things from going flat. Um, Janice is saying we're possibly introducing gamification and is asking if anyone's used this. So it'd be great if you could post your comments in and help Janice out there. Yeah, I think that's quite a quite, um, quite an interesting one, gamification, because I think uh, in theory it sounds sounds very very good. I've not seen a lot of it happening out there, so it would be interesting to see what what um, you know how people get on with that. But it, it does strike me on the on the face of it to be a a very powerful, uh, very powerful technique. Mm. Well, it's becoming increasingly common in everyone's daily lives, isn't it? With um, things like the Fitbit and different apps. So when you go running or monitoring what you eat, you can see graphs from everything from what you've eaten to how you sleep at the moment. So bringing that into the call center, you know, I think people like bars going up and you know being able to see that as a visual can help in its own way and in increasing performance. So yeah, now let's see if I can uh, share my screen here because. I have got up on the up on the screen here the Six Nations uh, Six Nations game. Hopefully, you can can you see that, Megan? Now, um, no. Uh, hopefully, that uh, should come up fairly soon. Anyway, so that uh, is the Six Nations Six Nations game. There, uh, I've got the uh, URL here, which if people are having problems seeing it. I'll just drop into the uh, drop into the chat room. Uh, so that's one uh, one game there that was sent in by Belcom. And certainly, if you've got any games that you you you've developed that worked and uh, you've got the rules for, if you'd like to uh, email those into newsdesk at callcenterhelper.com, we'd be absolutely delighted to share those with the uh, with the rest of the the community. And I'm not, I'll see if I can uh, get our World Cup games, which I think were football orientated, but might be able to be adapted for the uh, for the Rugby World Cup. So let's go here and uh, let's just uh, see if I can share this with everyone now. Okay, and while we are on the topic of seasonal and themed games, um, I'm just going to throw out the next question now. What do you think works best, ongoing or seasonal motivation schemes? So Would what like works best, seasonal or motivational schemes? Be interesting. I don't know if you can see that now, the World Cup games for your contact centre. I think it's going up there. I'll, I'll uh, put that into the, uh, into, the, into the chat room as well, so hopefully we can have a that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the question was, what works best, ongoing or seasonal motivation schemes? So there's there's a real variety here, obviously. Um, I went to a site visit in Essex to Neopost, and they do everything from giving daily meal vouchers out to their agents as spot prizes, and that's ongoing throughout the year and seems to boost morale. But at the same time, they also do a big competition that focuses on taking their top performers on a long haul holiday to Las Vegas or Jamaica. You know, every year is a big incentive and throughout the summer, it is about keeping your name at the top of that scoreboard and, you know, getting your plane ticket for that trip. And, you know, I personally think a combination of those two seems to work well. Um, would love to hear what you think. Um, Katie says a combination of the two I think would be beneficial. Um, and Shona seems to agree that a mix of both seasonal and ongoing going is good um, because it gives agents something to look forward to and just changes things up a bit on a daily basis. I think the other thing with it's quite nice with seasonal games is they're kind of you know you think what should be the next thing that we we do and they kind of almost 
as the season changes, you think, oh, the World Cup's coming up. Why don't we do the Rugby World Cup? Or it's Halloween coming through. Why don't we do a Halloween theme? So in a way, the changing season sort of lends itself to, to doing something, something like that. Yeah, I recently went to a Cineat contact centre in, Br in Bristol, I think it was, and um, they even do silly little things like uh, for Glastonbury, on the, they all come in wearing their wellies and they celebrate <laughs> Wimbledon by getting in strawberries and ice cream. And, you know, it's the little things like that that can make a big difference. That sounds... Uh... That sounds uh, sounds very good. I wonder if anyone's got any interesting seasonal things that they've uh, they've been doing. I think we're just waiting for a few more comments to come through in the chat room at the moment. But the general consensus is a combination of ongoing and seasonal um, incentives seems to be the best. We're shown even saying, "I love the sound of a big holiday." I think, <laughs> yeah, we've I'm got sure a lovely one. Going from... Very well. Shalhandra, who says we have a show and tell day. The managers get on the phone and show us how it's done, <laughs> or, or possibly show it how it's not done. Yeah, uh, which I think could be a could be a great motivation for the uh, uh, for the team. I think it was uh, I was reading a blog post um, yesterday about you know the popularity of of get back to the floor, um, and is it the undercover boss? Going in, you know, back into the organisation and doing things at, at grass levels. Well, I don't think it needs to necessarily be, you know, undercover, but certainly for the for the senior managers, for the director, the managing director, the CEO, even to to regularly get into the contact centre um, works very well from there. Them understanding how customer service or telesales works, um, and sometimes it's that these guys at the top don't get asked if they'd like to come in. So uh, you know, quite often it's you know a nice touch if you wanted to invite them come to come down and handle calls for a day. Um, you know, it can be a bit of a, a, a bit of a challenge, and that can be to you know across the board. Uh, could even be to the non-executive directors. It gives them an understanding of how the business is there, and sometimes it's just giving them the the permission to come down uh, that it's okay to to sort of cross all the different levels of hierarchy and get on the phone. I think that they could well find it's a lot of fun and it probably not a bad way of actually generating some extra uh, some extra budget if the contact centre needs it. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. And I think also the idea of just getting agents off the phones and maybe swapping with different departments as well within themselves, you know, if they're regularly talking to the sales or customer service team or passing things through to technical support, swapping those roles over is a good way to just increase understanding and communication in the call center and just stop little frustrations of you know wondering why that call might not be picked up straight away you know because they are busy so yeah just that sort of thing can help to really motivate and just generally boost morale across mm. the board really so, um, interesting comment from melissa saying we service fifty thousand clients and have got a, a staff of five or six uh, depending on whose turn it is to be sick. Oh, and I find that they don't want to partake in any activities after hours, even if it is for food and drink. Sounds like uh, employee engagement is a uh, is a bit of a, a bit of a problem there. So I wonder if anyone's got any uh, any suggestions on how to um, how to improve that uh, engagement from uh, from incentives. Um, I've seen this comment in from Helen who says, "Why not take them all out to?" To lunch during the working break time um, that keeps it within the working day then doesn't it and you know it's not infringing on any time they want to spend with their family or you know if they're already at work for long hours yeah well I guess if you're servicing 50,000 clients with five or six people you're probably a bit over understaffed and if people are, are really really that busy um, you, you know just constantly taking call after after call and put, Particularly if they're not very happy, it, you know it is going to be tough to build up the um, uh, you know expectation for them to, to come after hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's time for us to move on to the next question now. Um, the next question is: Do you run an agent of the month competition? Um, this is an area we've got a lot of chance to have some fun. I think we've seen different ones from the Buzz Awards for going to infinity and beyond, and we've had Gilbert awards I think at the Cineat contact center where their mascot is a giraffe and 
the award goes to people who've really stuck their neck out. So <laughs> yeah, there's quite a lot of fun to be had with this. So we'd love to hear what your agent of the month competition is themed like, and if you even have one to start with. Um, one, I'll of, just one of the ones that uh, I particularly uh, liked was the uh, one at the Connect to Cardiff call centre I saw, oh gosh, it must have been about 10 years ago now, um, where they had a daffodil uh, award and uh, what happened is that people who won the award, okay, no, I don't think it was called, it was called the Shiny Stars Award, and uh, within the team, the team selected the agent who they thought had uh, worked hardest in the, in the past month, um, and they sort of voted for it themselves. And the person who won the award that month had to make the award for next month. And it could be made out of sticky back plastic, or it could be out of, out of card, or they could knit it. Uh, and they made the award and they handed that award on to the next person. So it wasn't just winning the award, it was it was team-based. And the person physically had to make the awards. So there was a lot more invested in the production of it rather than just, you know, here's the, the 50 pounds in, uh, in John Lewis vouchers. Yeah, it's a lot more meaningful as well, isn't it? If it's something that's handmade and there's some thought in it, you know, you really want to win something that, that means a lot to everyone really, so yeah. And I also saw an interesting idea in terms of prizes of putting the money into a prize pot almost and buying the agent something that they really want that maybe they wouldn't have been able to buy themselves straight off. For example, if a horse riding fanatic needed a new jacket, maybe if they won the agent of the month competition, the money could go towards buying that jacket and the management team go out and buy it and then give it to them as a prize then the same as maybe for meal vouchers is there's an anniversary coming up or a new football kit or part of it you know something rather than just a cash prize that can be frittered away something that you know really means a lot when you give it to them mm. and talk of wearing jackets clint has said previously we would take all the top performers at the end of the month with our CC, ccm call center manager or head of department lunch where they got certificates and sweaters and there they and their face put up on a VIP brag board, motivating the others to get on that board and have lunch with the top dogs. Hmm. That's a good oh, idea. Sorry. I've got a comment from Katie that says, pizza takeaway would be good for our agents working the evening shift. Um, yeah, Janice has said, we'll, we'll shortly be introducing a bronze, silver, gold approach where staff can receive extra money by achieving the, the next level in relations to targets and behaviours. Um, well, Helen said, we run an agent of the week and also agent of the month competition. And towards the end of each week and each month, the agents work so much harder. So the competition between the agents is good fun and motivation for everyone. Yeah, I mean, there are some, some interesting questions about agent of the month competition is that effectively only one person wins that and it's, a, it's an individual um, and that, can be a little arbitrary. So um, certainly some of the latest management thinking is, is thinking, what do you do for motivating all of the all of the others? Whereas you know team-based targets could be uh, could be quite interesting um, interesting approach. Um, you know from that from that perspective. Okay, uh, Mark said we have different awards and centres for our staff weekly and monthly, which are both money driven and lunches. The time off as well um, and lots of staff give the ideas which works well however what we're seeing is that the top performers are really doing well however the middle group of staff are not always rising to the challenge um, and that is the nub of, of so much with motivation is that if you could get the average up to sort of the top level you'd see a, a huge improvement in uh, in performance overall but that's actually a, a, quite a tough quite, quite a tough thing to do Okay, um, I think it's time for the next question now. Um, it's more current with the, in line with the digital channels that are now on offer, but do you run separate motivation schemes for agents working on non-traditional channels such as web chat and Twitter, or do you just have a kind of everyone's all marked in on the same scheme and hope for the best? Yes, yeah, because it's quite, quite a different skill set for web chat and for um uh and for, for for twitter so it'd be very fascinating to see what uh, what people do for that it's 
So quite an interesting comment from uh, Ryan on our previous topic. Our director has an open door policy and he believes that we all work with each other and not for him. Agents feel recognized because they get to sit and have lunch with the director on certain days and makes his presence felt in the call center. Uh, you won't find that in every call center. Um, I particularly admired one call center um, several years ago where there was a, a very inspirational director there and he would leave his office about uh, 4.15 every afternoon and he would just basically walk uh, with his jacket slung across his uh, shoulder through the call center floor and he would take him about an hour and a quarter to walk through and he'd sort of leave at, uh, leave at half past five. He came in very early. Um, but it, it, was, it was a great way of saying, you know, he was, he was heading off, but also gave him a chance to see what, what was really happening and chat with people and find out what they were doing. And uh, it was very, very motivational for his team. Yeah, I've seen this on site visits as well, just uh, managers taking the time to walk around to be on first name basis with their agents. It does seem to go down really well when you're actually sitting talking to an agent, you know, they know that their manager's called Sue, she's over there, they have any problems they can ask. There's, you know, there's no barrier in the way for bringing up any issues or, you know, even asking a favour. So I, I think that's a really good approach and it doesn't take much time to just walk a different route through the office or, you know, just make the time to say hi to someone. So. Yeah, it's a definite, you know, management change to make if you're thinking of trying to just boost overall morale. Yeah, and it's interesting on the um, different reward schemes for different uh, channels. It, it looks like most people seem to be um, keeping them in, in a similar way. Darren says we have the same rewards for each channel, but the measures are different, which is quite okay. interesting. Yeah. Um, Alex says, unfortunately, agents don't do this, but looking into the future would be great to get some ideas of, uh, of how we could motivate people on on things like web chat and Twitter, because to some extent they can be um, much more silent in their approach. You know, when you're on the phone and you've done a good job for someone, uh, they tell you about it. You can hear the delight in their in their voice, but it's a bit bit more difficult on um, on web chat where people say thanks, bye, and then they just sort of uh, just hang up. So yeah, you don't know whether you've done well. Yeah, and even on Twitter, I suppose the best you can hope for is a retweet or. A favourite, really, and it doesn't give quite the same buzz, does it? No, I guess on a web chat, that, that, that you know, I was on uh, with Amazon yesterday, and they said, "Oh, please stay online, you know, close the web chat, and then then take part in the survey." Which was two questions on how well did I perform, and that goes straight back to the agent, so it gives a a more immediate feedback channel. Mm. We've had a question from Shona that says, "Any advice on how to get the manager slash director to buy into the management walking around mm -hmm. approach?" Um, <laughs> Have you got any ideas on that one, John T? Well, I think I think some of it is is asking if they'd like to like to do that, if they'd like to uh, come on the floor and uh, and uh, take some take some calls. It might be they'd like to have a, a meeting on, you know, ask them if they'd like to join in one of our team huddles. I mean, if you've got a reluctant director who's perhaps a, a bit um, a bit shy, you know, it can be um, can be can be difficult. But I think certainly. Uh, making the invitation and then if they say no at that point it's not necessary to, to treat that as that's no forever it might be they're particularly busy that week um, and just keep on uh, keep on plugging away or uh, or if there's a, a good one it might be if you've got the agent of the month competition ask if they'd like to come and present the award um, which is quite nice just come onto the floor and hand it out um, you know, because I guess that you know the one of the problems if they're not keen on doing, it, they're probably a bit embarrassed by it. And, and one of the challenges I find with a lot of directors, they don't know as much in the business as as uh, as you think they do, and will probably we know may know that, that they don't. And so it can actually be quite embarrassing if they if they feel they might be exposing their lack of knowledge on the business. So I think you know, ask them if they'd like to listen, come in down, listen to some phone calls. Um, be interesting to know if anyone else in the uh, audience has got any any tips for how to get the uh, manager or director to buy into the management by walking around approach well I think the only response we've had so far is that Helen said have you asked them if they'd like to be involved so I think you know it is going to depend on the individual managers that you're dealing with you know some people will come into a business and it'll be their natural 
approach to want to say hi to everyone and be in the thick of things and some people will be a bit more closed off and you know you might just find it's a bit of bad luck that you don't have someone who is as willing but there's definitely a lot to be said for persevering and making it you know attempting you know like some of the ideas like Jonty said to just you know bring them onto the floor for different reasons and different events and just try and get them excited about being there really yeah and uh, Helen has said uh, how about asking them to do a motivation chat every few weeks or, or just some kind of meeting to show their faces mm. to everyone that's quite that's a, a yeah that's a really good idea yeah i think that could work very nicely as shona said um the managers are good in other ways and they do listen and have coffee in the afternoon so it might work better for a more shy manager maybe yeah i think that could uh, that could work okay and um, what i'm going to put in the next question now is are any of your schemes, your motivation schemes, sorry, attached to earning bonuses and commission? I think it, recent research we did, very few people are actually giving out bonuses. Yeah, it seems to be that a lot of the, the you know, certainly in telesales centre, there's, there's always an element of, of commission or bonus. But yes, we did a, did a poll recently. It does seem that uh, it is largely, um, uh, largely, uh, sort of fixed salary in, in many ways with some sort of incentive scheme, not necessarily a bonus. Mm -hmm. I guess it can often be difficult to know how to how to base the base the bonus. And I think there was a comment earlier about um, once you start doing something, there's a, a ongoing expectation that things will get better and better as uh, as time goes on. Yep, um, I've actually just pulled up the research, John T, and it says the question was, how do your agents earn their bonuses? And 38.7% said our agents don't get any bonuses at all, um, while 14% get their bonuses from meeting other objectives, and 19.6% say a combination of sales and quality individually. So there is quite a variety there. Mm. Can you, bonuses. is it possible you can pop that up on the screen? It's the, uh, on the left hand panel, it's the, the green, uh, the green arrow button screen share. Um, yeah, can you see we can, those yeah. results? Yeah. yeah, that just popped up. I think you've got to press the, the other button that uh, says to share it. It just says I'm screen sharing currently. Oh, uh, there we are, that's it. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, it only comes up while you're talking, Megan, so keep on talking. Okay, I'll keep on talking. Yep, those results came as a result of a survey we did in April this year asking over 600 contact centre professionals what was happening in the contact centre. And it was it was really interesting to see, you know, what people thought right now in terms of everything from bonuses to the metrics they were using. And, you know, just a lot of, there's a lot of research there that's quite valuable. Um, I'll post the link into the call centre into the chat room in a moment so you can download the research if you'd like to there's a lot of interesting takeaways there and everything from sla targets you know just what people do on a daily basis to motivate their staff so mm. yeah it's really good, Very good. we've had some uh, comments in from uh, alouette has said we have a bonus structure in place however this is separate from the incentives we run uh, darren says we give a bonus 75 sorry, percent sorry 75 pounds for hitting 95 percent uh, CSAT that comes off the IVR survey, seventy-five pounds for hitting NIA, which is next issue avoidance. I guess that's a, a somewhat more sophisticated way of doing first call resolution of, of, of not getting uh, repeat or avoiding repeat uh, repeat calls or repeat issues, which looks interesting. Uh, Alex says ours. D does, doesn't, but management did allow extra days off at Christmas for the whole team due to hard work. And I think certainly uh, things like time off is a is a, a very uh, a very good incentive incentive for what I can see, uh, particularly if you can time that uh, during quieter quieter periods. Certainly, a lot of contact centres have a, a peak on a on a Monday, then gradually tails off towards a Friday. So uh, there's often slack in the schedule for um awarding a few people in the team a day you know half day off on a friday mm. um just to let everyone know i've now posted the link to the survey findings into the chat room so you'll be able to download that and read that more okay that's good this, yeah this year's findings so, and shona uh, says that they're um 
currently reviewing their bonus games and has got a question does anyone have homeworking agents and uh, what do they do about the incentives for the homeworking agents because it can be certainly a, a bit more a bit more tricky to do a, a, a competition like dressing you know or an incentive like dressing up as a superhero if yeah. you're the only one at home dressed up as um as a super, as super, superman yeah. or spider-man or... Uh, i think a lot of that comes down to communication from agents working from home or just you know working across different offices um, one of the call centers that i visited was making quite good use of an intranet system where you know if they were sitting either at home or in the other offices with you know their santa hat on they could post pictures onto essentially a shared facebook page and just you know keep the morale up that way but everything from newsletters phone calls you know just just keeping those conversations alive between the different people so they don't feel isolated and just they do feel that that team that team spirit really just in a slightly different way so yeah if anyone else has any other ideas and can help showing around that would be really good so i think you were going to ask be asking about the the best uh, motiv motivation scheme that anyone's ever run. Yeah, um, that is our next question. So that is, yeah, what is the best and most exciting motivation scheme you have ever run? You know, I think we've heard some really interesting things in the past, from giving away cars and stealing the manager's parking car parking space for a month so they don't have to worry about that. And obviously, like I said earlier, the Neo Post taking their agents on that massive holiday every year for their top performers, you know, It'd be hard to beat something like that, really. But we'd love love to hear what you've got. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what is the the best scheme you've ever run. Um, what was the most successful, and I guess what uh, what made it the most successful would be um, would be fascinating to see. Yeah, because we're not necessarily looking for the big things like the holidays here, really, are we, John? Too. It could just be you know giving out the sweets on a daily basis. Just is you know, foolproof and it always works and, you know, it always boosts morale. So it could be something just like that. Yeah, Fabian says we have an adherence incentive. If the agents have not been off sick or late for a certain amount of days in the month, they would get an incentive paid to them at the end of the next month. Certainly, if you remember the um, BBC call centre with Nev in his uh, call centre in Swansea, they certainly seem to have a... a, a uh, a lateness incentive which uh, was paid to uh, paid to everyone yeah it's just the little things like that isn't it that they all add up and you know if it's the difference between snoozing your alarm again and getting in or pulling yourself out of bed if you've got a cold you know for a little bit of extra money and it, it being incentivized like that it can go a long way and uh, we've got a comment in from janice that says we have a tv in our breakout area and they have, and our agents have scheduled breaks in the morning and afternoon. Um, I, I think breakout areas are, are a great, uh, an under underused area of the uh, of of the contact centre, which you know can be more than just about a place to make a cup of tea or uh, heat up your heat up your microwave microwave meal. Um, certainly, things like TVs are very good. Um, I've also seen table football. Uh, is quite a good one. A, a pool table. You just need to be a bit careful if it's, uh, you know, too close to the actual contact centre floor. If you know there's uh, lots of uh, lots of balls or shouting going on, if people get a bit excited, but yeah. uh, that can be quite nice. Yeah, um, I put an art article out recently called 12 Fun Ideas for Your Breakout Room," and that includes everything from turning your breakout room into a cosy living room to having a cash machine on site to make lives agents lives easier as in color putting your trophies on display and um, one idea I really like is creating a wall of why I love to work here so all the agents you know have an opportunity to post their own messages on a chalkboard or whiteboards you know they walk into that room and it's their space and their ideas and reminds them even after a rubber shift you know but with a particularly challenging customer you know what is good about working there that they like their friends there's a good team spirit and you know there is a variety of things that can be done you know, including a good news wall board, um, a plant a plant growing competition to decorate your windowsills, um, a photography competition for and you know framing the winning prints and putting them on the walls. It's all about creating that sense of ownership in the call centre and there's the little things again that go a long way 
in creating a nice work environment. So um, yeah, I'm just going to post the link to that article now into the chat room so you can see it in full. But there are some really good ideas in there to just take away and implement. And we've had some interesting uh, uh, ones coming through that um, Denise said we offer subsidized restaurant, which offers great food at very reasonably price, which the staff love. I know a number of people take that a bit further. And uh, Ryan has said uh, they pay for cooked meals in winter, which helps with uh, with adherence. Uh, feedback from the agencies, they love it because they save money. Um, I've actually seen uh, it was the British Gas Call Centre in Cardiff where they'd provide a free breakfast. Um, effectively, it was not much more than a toaster, some bread, some jam, and uh, some cereal milk. But it did mean, meant that they actually found that their um, people were getting into work earlier because they could come in, have breakfast there, and then start the uh, uh, start the shift. And uh, you know, I think there was quite, there's been quite a number of studies that show that uh, people who have had breakfast um, right away from school kids upwards uh, do tend to perform better during the uh, during the morning than, than, the, than the people who've, who've skipped a meal. So uh, uh, it might be a bit difficult to get that through the uh, through the company, but it, it um, could work out quite nicely as a way of um, getting people in early and getting the uh, getting the levels up. Yeah, I also imagine it's quite a social opportunity and can help with things like team building as well, and just general bonding if everyone does come in for breakfast and has that little bit of time off the phones, you know, where they're not just talking to the person sat next to them. So you know, there's a lot to be gained for something like that. And um, we've had an interesting comment in from Marie that says, um, uh, her agents are motivated by general praise for a good day's work, seems to work well, including reading customer reviews at the end of staff meetings to boost overall morale. And again, the team suites on busy days is it's so cheap and simple, but it just shows that we appreciate their hard work. And I think that is quite important, isn't it, John, to just show in some appreciation for your agent's efforts, because it's not an easy job and it is stressful. And, you know, those little things that get them through the day are really appreciated. Yeah, certainly the, um, you know, it's often said that the best motivation is just a simple thank you. Um, it doesn't cost anything to do and, and actually is, is uh, you know, often surprisingly overlooked. And that could be anything from just saying, you know, I thought you did really well, right the way up to a thank you cards, um, you know, just handing out the, uh, handing out the sweets. Uh, again, we sort of talked a lot on food uh, recently, but, you know, it does, uh, does work very nice and it is a, uh, a nice way of saying thank you for um, we appreciate what you've done. Yeah, these um, verbal comments as well seem to work best, you know, in the moment, you know, it's the minute a call's ended, you know, if your team manager spotted something good, it's going over to that agent and saying, you know, well done there and then while it's fresh in the moment and will be remembered, you know, because as much as it's good to do, you know, regular meetings and quality meetings, you know, eight weeks after something good has happened, you know, the agent's probably forgotten anyway and, you know, the opportunities missed them but there and then if they've done something good they're more likely to carry it into the next call and have a spring in their step if it's recognized there and then yeah i think it's that that instant uh, instant recognition i've got a lovely one here from uh, shona who says uh, maybe not such an incentive but uh, something certainly helped for engagement in interpersonal relationships and competitiveness we have run a weight loss club i love the the title of it they call it the hunger games and uh, everyone taking part uh, pays five pounds a week and did weigh-ins for eight weeks and it was only based on their weight loss percentage rather than the actual weight loss making it fair for bigger and smaller competitors uh, we encouraged healthy eating set up an online forum sent tw twice week weekly motivational updates it went really well included agents uh, support staff and the senior managers the person who lost the biggest percentage won the jackpot and a portion of the jackpot was also given to the person with the best attitude or approach. I think that's a, a really nice one because often one of the problems working in, in a call centre is it can be quite sedentary. You sat sat down for um, eight hours, and if you drive to work, there's not a, a great deal of chance to get to get exercise in the in the middle of that. And um, if there's a vending machine, it's very easy just to uh, to fill up on 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 chocolate sweets. Yeah, and there's always something to be gained, isn't there, from doing something collectively as a team. You know, when you exercise, you do feel better. So if you can get more of your agents exercising, you know, it, it 
hopefully will mean they'll be happier in themselves and that should have a positive impact on overall morale and general motivation in the call centre. Mm. So, yeah, I think it also works to be gained from that. Quite well between departments as well, because, you know, the, you know, one of the problems is we tend to socialise within people within our team or our immediate area and getting across the business, breaking down boundaries uh, can be quite, quite difficult. But if you've got a, a you know, a, a slimming club, that that tends to go across all the uh, all the different parts of the uh, of the organisation. Yeah, it's one of the problems with any motivation scheme, isn't it? Is it including everyone? So, I think that is a good way. You know, it's something everyone's interested in their health in some way or another. So, yeah, I think that's a good incentive scheme to try and roll out. And uh, Fabian says we uh, currently have TVs in the call centre. And we play music videos that also gets the spirit going on the floor, especially on Friday. So um, uh, I don't know if that's before the shift starts or actually uh, during the uh, during the middle of that. So that's, that's quite an interesting uh, interesting approach. Certainly, in a lot of sporting events, what I've seen is um, putting the you know the sport up on the up on the wallboard. So if someone is interested in what the latest. Uh, results are from the Rugby World Cup, and if it's running during during the the shift times, they can at least see it up on the screen, often on silent, but they can just keep a praise so they're not feeling like they're they're missed out, missing out if they're scheduled during that. Uh, yeah, uh, it can also help people not take sickies, can it, <laughs> during these periods? So, yeah, it's good to indulge them in a way. Um, we've got some interesting comments still coming through. Um, there is one so just yeah um denise said that we've extended our opening hours so our staff do get a cooked breakfast if they come in early just following up from what we we're saying earlier um and she also says i speak to my team and get to know them and just talk to them about their families and what makes what's important to them really and that just seems to be a really good motivator yeah actually knowing people outside of uh of work life is is, is quite important we talked about the uh the best friend at, at work. Uh, one of the tests I often did for team leaders would be to go around on a on a Tuesday and ask the team leaders what their team did for the weekend. Uh, then you'd get really get an idea of which team leaders were engaged with their their team and which ones sort of just sort of brushed all that personal stuff to to one side. It can be a, a powerful tool to see um, you know which ones are building best rapport. No, I definitely agree. Um, we've had a, another comment in from Mark that says, we have a wall of merit where we have every staff member's name up and what they have achieved. We also have a testimonial section where we put all the client compliments and highlight the staff member's names. I really like this idea. I think that's inclusive. The fact that that's every staff member's name, you know, and what they specifically have achieved is really important. It's not just the top performers. It's, you know, the little things that everyone does every day that they're being recognised for and not forgotten. So I really like that idea. But it's particularly good for um, also one of the, the challenges that when you join a, a company, you think, you know, who is that person over there? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're careful, you can sort of read their, their name badge, but often the names are quite small. Whereas if you look on the, on the wall and up on the wall and say, oh, that, that's Alex and that's uh, Jenny, you know, it becomes easier. And then when you pass them in the, in the corridor, you can say, oh, hello, Alex. Um, it, it, it's just a little bit more... Um, uh, rather than, oh, I wish I could remember that person's name. Hmm. There's a following up on that. Helen said, I'm a great believer in praising the team and individuals throughout the day and having their names mentioned in a meeting is very motivational and all our walls are covered in every agent's progress. Again, building that familiarity, you know, if someone is pointed out in a meeting of having achieved something, you know, that person gets you know, the benefit of that praise, but also it does introduce them to the rest of the team and keeps up. You know the communication links really doesn't it so. mm. and it sounds like mitch also had a, a wall of fame where we show employees of the, of the week they seem to love this we also have a big board on which each person gets a weekly uh turn to write a motivational message which i think is quite interesting yeah i love that idea uh, ryan says having a cafeteria with the kitchen is always a plus in the call center world before I moved to South Africa, I worked for a company called the Richmond Group in Bournemouth, where everything is subsidized to one quid. Upon my visit uh, to them last year, you could see it motivates them. 
They have electric scooters, pool tables, table tennis, which the staff appreciate, as it creates a second home environment. And certainly if we've got a, a sort of younger, younger group, if you can create that second home environment, does make it you know sort of very different from sort of a, a cold sterile sort of place where people come to work and go home at the end of the end of their shift yeah i suppose it'll also just generally keep people motivated on a daily basis from you know pulling together as a team you know if they're comfortable with who they're working with and they're emotionally invested in the company in each other then you know they will be more prepared to put their neck out and you know pick up the slack if someone's off sick or you know just work together to support a new team member you know just there's a lot of positives to be gained from that environment if you put some effort into it, creating it in the first place. I love the comment here from uh, Connor, who says, um, we do an outdoor cinema after working hours and also like the TV show, uh, offer it's a, it's a knockout on the field with inflatables. It really works and everyone loves working here, which I think that's a, that's a, a lot of fun if you can get the bouncy castle into the, uh, into the car park. Yeah, we've had a fun one in from Mark that says our team leaders um, get as their team ask their teams to set a stretch target, and if achieved, the team leader will dance to the Macarena. There's a great <laughs> vibe that's created, and there's a few other comments that's come in since saying that's great and definitely going to implement that one. So yeah, that's quite a funny idea, and I'm sure you know it's it's something that I'm sure the agents want to see as their team leaders, you know, being being a bit silly and you know it doesn't cost anything it's just you know the team leaders taking an interest in getting the best out of their teams and yeah i really love that idea i think that's a, <laughs> that's a great one yeah I wonder if it can be done to other songs other than the macarena i think there's quite a, a variety now to choose from isn't there but um yeah i think that is a good idea um, I think I'm going to put the next question in now, which is quite an interesting one of who organises motivation schemes in your contact centre? Um, some activity we find is very agent led, you know, they'll be slightly bored one week and they'll want to have a bake sale on Friday. So they'll rally around their team to do something like that. Whereas other people do seem to have more of a fun budget or a bigger, a bigger team they're in place or volunteers, you know, extracurricular activity to make sure that there is a Friday night social once a month or, you know, that the Christmas party is organized every year and it's not forgotten about. So yeah, I'll just put... It's quite an interesting one because it'd be interesting to know if people also have a sports and social uh, club or sports or social committee within the, uh, uh, within the contact center. I used to work for a company where we all used to put in 10 pounds a month into the uh, into a pot and uh, that paid for the christmas party and a number of other events we did and if we hit targets uh for the quarter the company would double that uh, amount of money and uh, it was really, really good, good idea. and uh, we had enough then on if we when we had a really good year um we had no, enough there to pay for the christmas party and to put everyone up in a hotel for the night including partners which was a uh, that's quite a really a budget. Nice yeah, I mean, it was, a, you know, it was um, was really nice. We, we'd sort of raised a, a lot from different activities we've done as well. So, hmm. well, we've started to have some comments come through now for the who organises motivation schemes in your contact centre question. Um, Connor said we have an innovation team who deals with this. Um, Denise says we have a social team who organise these events. Shona says it's me, the communications and engagement executive. <laughs> I've not heard of that job title before, but that sounds really, really important to just be keeping everyone in good spirits. Um, Jane says the management team and the staff committee. Um, Shona says she tries to involve agents in the organisation of events where possible. And I think that's probably quite important, isn't it, John? To, you know, there's no point saying, you know, let, let's all go out clubbing on a Friday night. If, if no one's interested in that, it comes down to knowing your agents and what they're interested in. And, you know, if it is that they'd, they'd rather go to the cinema, it's just listening to them and what they want. So maybe it does maximise turnout and, you know, the events is money well spent. So Well, it also gets away from this sort of us and them uh, approach, which can be quite good. Um, the only challenge is, you know, I, I guess is, is just keeping everything within, uh, within an overall budget. But um, you know, I do think that's that's a very nice touch. And also, you've got volunteers. People love certain people love getting involved in special projects. Some people are quite 
uh, gregarious and like uh, like arranging different uh, uh, different activities. So that can also work, also work very well. I think um, Janice has agreed there that she said you get more buy-in if you have an engagement forum run by the agents that you can direct ideas to. That way the motivation events are their ideas taken forward. Uh, while Alex has said it's them and sometimes other agents who organises everything. The organisation also runs some schemes to help motivate staff such as big activity days. I suppose that's where some variety maybe comes in, isn't it? That you know, yeah. you've got the agents, you know, maybe saying let's all just dress up for Red Nose Day on Friday or, you know, just all wear a red T shirt, but then bigger events, maybe like the Christmas party that needs more management, it you know, maybe is a multi layered thing of And there's there's simple things like um, you know, arranging a treasure hunt is a is quite a good one. If there's it's sort of quite difficult to do. So you've almost got to find someone who's good at arranging treasure hunts and then they can put that whole thing to together. I remember some of the absolute hoots. Um, if I was talking with a friend uh, yesterday, he said he went on a treasure hunt to Greenwich. Uh, I think the first question was, what's the connection between the uh, between the church and the pub next to it? The, um, and I think the connection there was the, uh, it was the, the pub was called the, um, uh, the pub was called the Cathedral and the church, I can't remember the the uh, no the pub was called the Mitre and it was next to the cathedral, so the connection was a bishop. Uh, it was just lots of little things like that, gathering up a bus ticket, a leaf from Quercus Robusta, uh, different things like that, all going off, very easy to uh, arrange. And then uh, two hours later, they all meet up uh, meet up in the pub afterwards. Mm, so, yeah, that sounds um, like a good idea. And we've had an interesting comment in from Marie that she said it's a bit of everyone when it comes to organising some fun in the call centre. We implement a family style environment which is very open and honest so everyone helps to motivate each other. The team plays pool every Sunday and the MD even hosts poker nights to interact with all the staff. So it really is a team effort. Um, I've also got a nice idea that's coming from Mark that says what's worked really well for us is that we give to charity. Um, we give blankets in winter to give back to the community and sometimes we also bring in things to make sandwiches and throughout the day each team member takes 20 minutes out of their day to help make them and then at lunchtime they go to a local homeless shelter and, and give them the sandwiches and it just helps the staff you know, pull together but also do something that really feels worthwhile and that they feel happy about doing. And uh, we do love that, that charity, we quite often cover photos from uh... A charity event so if you've got any uh, charity events send them uh, send them in to us um, but it does build this overall overall theme and certainly you know red nose day and uh, comic relief um, seem to uh, uh, and children in need days also seem to work well of getting the, the team together yeah it um, goes back to what you were saying earlier wasn't it that there's a lot of opportunities if you keep your eyes and ears open you know to tie in with you know regular charity events or anything else that's going on throughout the year and just bring that into the call center and uh, you know, it can also work well with just getting a, a team together um for running an event like a cycle ride or um or if you're running a, a marathon or half marathon in fact uh, megan isn't that quite uh, quite apt currently yeah I'm doing my half marathon in a month's time exactly today actually so need to be going out running later so yeah but it is good those sorts of things are really good and doing things for charity and that personal challenge just gives you something else to focus on outside the normal day-to-day -day. and you know every time I get sponsored or someone you know puts a goodwill gesture in it's just it's really nice and you know you feel like you're giving back and doing something positive and I imagine a big team doing a, something like that in a call centre would do a, a lot for morale and boosting it. So how much are you up to so far? Four hundred and sixty-five pounds, I think. Wow. So yeah, it's going well. So yeah, really pleased with that. So yeah. Yep. Um, I think we're actually at two o'clock now, John T. If you Okay, well we've uh, really enjoyed this. It's certainly been uh, been throwing through. So I've certainly enjoyed this. Um Megan, what's the date we've got for our next live chat we're, we're planning? So in about a month's time, isn't it? Yep, I, th I think we're thinking of doing one in September. I'd have to have a quick look. Um... I will put that up onto the uh, up onto the website. So thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we're going to keep the uh, chat room open for a little while. So if you need to uh, 
rush off to the um, off to a meeting. We'll, we'll stay online for another uh, another ten minutes or so, in case there's other anything else that people would uh, would like to uh, like to add in. So thank you all for for joining us. We've got lots and lots of uh, of different ideas from this. And if you want a copy of the transcript of the of the the chat messages we've had so far, there's a little icon on the just above the send button. That's a bit like a. It's meant to be a filing tray. It's a. Um, uh, I, I it's it's the death symbol. Across, it's the middle symbol, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's it's um, like an arrow symbol like this. So hopefully you can uh, you can see that if you see that. Uh, icon there. If you press on that, you'll be able to download a copy of the transcript. If there's any uh, ideas that you'd like to uh, like to take from the webinar, and uh, just like to thank you all for um, dialing in, and we'll uh, be uh, reconvening in about a uh, in about a month's time. Yeah. So um, I think there's some also nice ones coming in. Joanne said uh, our company organised an annual award night, free bar and food for the staff, with mu music and entertainment provided. Awards are given out during the night for various achievements. The best negotiator or the best customer service agent, which I think is quite nice. Um, Denise says, well, we have two pay reviews a year, which is a great morale boost. Uh, if any, I don't know if anyone else has that sort of thing in place. And um, we also forgot to mention that, you know, if you did want to be part of the live video panel, there is an opportunity for that to be on with me and John, so having your say on these different issues. So, um, yeah, if you just, if you are interested in that, if you just want to, make comment in the chat room or email the news desk at callcenterhelper.com um yeah we'd be very great well you'd be very welcome to join us yeah be just to for our part of the commentary i think that would be yeah quite good fun if you'd like to come along you don't have to have a webcam to do that we can if you prefer just to um do it as a bit of a a, a voice call we can bring you in uh, bring you into that which would be good so uh, a couple of other points just uh, coming through and Marie said, I've also been to a family member's workday incentive day. They closed the factory for a full day. All family and friends of the workers are invited. They have a coconut shy, face painting, bouncy castle and food. It encourages real team spirit. I suppose will always be a great laugh. Not easy for all businesses to close for the day though, uh, which is great. Um, Paul's put in a very long uh, list of uh, recommendations, which I think is uh, Great about that. Taking feedback, take actions, create a set of values, mm. uh, strive to maintain good relationship with employees, uh, which is all great. So it looks like we've got a lot of people uh, uh, logging off now. Uh, Marie said it's been fantastic. Thanks for all the uh, great ideas, which uh, Connor also agrees with. Uh, Gabriella says thanks for all the uh, all of the tips there. Yeah, and if anyone else wants to give us any feedback at all, feel free to post it in the chat room now. We'll certainly take your ideas on board moving forward. That would be great. Well, I'm going to close down the video part of the call now, and uh, I will be in the chat room uh, texting you away if anyone wants to uh, uh, carry on in the discussion there. So thanks, everyone, for uh, for joining us. And we look to, I think, um, our next uh, time we're online is we'll be doing a webinar in I think it's the second week of uh, uh, of September. So um, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you all again before too long. It's been a good hour. Thank you then. Bye bye all. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. -bye.